The ACC tournament begins tomorrow here in the nation's capital, North Carolina. Your top seed star player R.J. Davis was named ACC Player of the Year earlier on Tuesday, Monday, whatever the hell today is. Head coach Hubert Davis won Coach of the Year. Arch rival Duke, the two seed defending champion, looking to repeat for the first time since they won three consecutive from 2009 to 2011. Currently, only four ACC teams in Joe Lenardi's projected NCAA tournament field, which would be the fewest in the last decade. It includes a Virginia team and the last four in. Wake Forest and Pittsburgh could face one another in the quarters in a potential tournament elimination game. And with the ACC tournament in town, it takes us back to the uh, long forgotten Capital Center. You didn't play in the Capital Center ACC tournament, did you, Jay Billison? I never did. I played in the old Omni twice. Okay. The, the tournament when I played was in Atlanta twice during my four years in Greensboro twice. Okay. But Greensboro, of course, the legendary home of the tournament. Back, back in the day, there was a, a, the Capital Center, and it takes me back to Lefty and some great, great memories. But ACC tournament in town, you'll be calling the games. And I, I largely it feels like the heavy lifting for this conference has been done in terms of who's in. But we look at that back end and Wake and Virginia sort of tenuous Pittsburgh as well. What's your sense of what has to happen on the back end for this league to get as many in as it hopes to have? I think Wake Forest and Pittsburgh have to win their early games. Obviously, if they get toward North Carolina and happen to get clipped in that game, that's one thing. If they lose before that, it puts them in a, in a bad spot. Uh, Virginia is the most interesting case because on paper, uh, Virginia's in the tournament. Mm -hmm. But when you watch them play over the last month, you're going, they're not playing very well and they can't score. Uh, so how do you process that? How do you say, do you say Indiana State's better than they are right now? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't think that's, they, they are. But I go to the paper after I make my decision on do I th which team do I think is better after studying them. I've had this conversation with Stanford Steve a lot and, and, and Joe Lenardi as well about just how much weight does this week actually even hold? But then you and I were having a conversation off here about philosophically how much weight should it carry? I thought it was an interesting point you made vis-a-vis -vis an Indiana State whose, whose work, unfortunately for them, is done. Played a great game when Drake didn't win it. But now if you're a Waker Pitt, you get all these, all these chances that they don't get. Is that reasonable? I don't think it's the right thing to do. I think the NCAA tournament process is incredibly fair. Every team has the same chance to get into the tournament field by winning their automatic bid, mm -hmm. which is their league against their peers that they chose to be among. Here's what I find unfair in the system. If we can determine who the best teams are after the automatic qualifiers as we get to, to Selection Sunday, okay. we can do it a week earlier. So I say list the teams one through 68 without concern for automatic. Okay. And then you get to the conference tournaments and you either win your automatic bid or you don't. You don't get any credit for winning a couple games. But take Indiana State. They played a hellacious game against Drake in the Missouri Valley Conference Final. Yep. As of right now, the bracketologists say Indiana State is in, right? Mm -hmm. They're in the field. But if Wake wins, if this team wins, if that team wins, they, they get bounced out. The, the big conferences get more bites at the apple once they get to their conference tournaments. I don't think that's right, but the tournament is idiot proof. Can't screw it up. Uh, but, but I think that would be more equitable. Cut it off at the end of the regular season and the big shots don't get extra bites out. I just want to ask you about the Mountain West because I've watched them a ton. I find it to be remarkably entertaining. The top half of that league is just a bar brawl whenever they're matched up against one another. What's your sense of the relative merit of that particular conference? Not compared to anyone else, just what do they have? Top five teams are really good. They're really good. They could play with anybody. Now, if you put those five teams from the top of the Mountain West and you put them in the ACC or you put them in the SEC, would their records look the same? No, they wouldn't. No reasonable basketball person would agree with that. That's where the difficulty comes in. On one level, you're going to have to do it on the paper. Quad one wins, even though quad one changes from week to week. Different committees view it differently, and different committee members view it differently. So they say now, just for example, the last 10 games is no longer a written criteria for the committee. But an individual committee member can look at it and say, the last 10 games, I think Virginia hadn't played well. I'm not going to put them in the field. The voting is all anonymous when they get in the room. Okay. You know, every time they vote, nobody knows how anybody else voted unless they tell one of their colleagues. And so the system works fine. They may make, make a mistake that we think is a mistake. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's close enough.